Okay. So hello, everybody. My name is Jacob Alejandro Rivas. I am a, a transition coordinator for the Federation for Children with Special Needs. Uh, you are at the first Connecting Youth. Connecting Youth is a series, uh, an open forum where we'll discuss next gen, we'll discuss careers, uh, and we'll either introduce or walk you through sort of the life of someone participating in next gen, looking to build themselves. Uh, I am Jacob Rivas. I'm joined by, to the right of me on my screen. So maybe that works. Oh, me? Is that my cue? So hi, um, I'm Michaela Metcalf. Um, I am the Next Gen Careers Youth Coordinator, um, also at the Federation for Children with Special Needs. Um, I work with um, Michelle and Emmanuel um, who are from the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Coalition, um, which is where our um, Next Gen Careers Initiative is based. Um, so again, like Jacob said, uh, welcome to an introduction to Next Gen Careers. Um, this tonight's session is um, specifically focused for um, young adults and families, just to help you get a better idea of kind of what we have going on in this program. Um, and it is the first monthly meeting of our Connecting Youth series. So this is gonna be, let's see, every second Tuesday, is it? Yes, yeah. um, every second Tuesday of each month, um, we're gonna have other Connecting Youth um, webinars, which are gonna be super cool. Um, and I can't wait to see who we get to speak. Um, so just to give you a quick intro, oh, Jacob, would you like to speak? Um, just for Connecting Youth, what we are trying to accomplish here is to give you folks uh, a chance to speak to people that are maybe familiar with life a little bit at the next step, uh, people going through next gen, people that work next gen, folks that are participating in college, uh, maybe through the Macy program or maybe just uh, after an IEP. Uh, so we're super excited to have you at the first one. Uh, this will grow. I wanted to also... Uh, apologize for not mentioning we're joined by Elizabeth, who is uh, our American Sign Language interpreter. So thank you, Elizabeth, uh, as well as Patricia, who also works uh, for the Federation for Next Gen, sort of in this space where we build each other. Um, our presenters today are Michelle Banks, who is the strategic director for Next Gen. So she directs strategy. She knows a lot about Next Gen. Uh, based on that. And then Emmanuel Bigger Allen, who we were really fortunate to have join us at our youth conference uh, just a few weeks ago. He is the peer coordinator for the Southern region. Is that right, Emmanuel? So we're, yeah, so those are your speakers today. We couldn't be happier. I actually cut off Michaela now uh, to say hi to Elizabeth and to uh, mention Patricia too is here. Rebecca is here, our project director in Avon. Michaela, I think I accidentally ran over them, but is there anything else you want to say? There we go. Um, so I just wanted to say, let's see, um, blah, blah, blah. You already introduced people. That's true. Yeah, awesome. Um, I wanted to say that we have interpretation available um, in American Sign Language, as Jacob referred to. Um, we also have it available in Spanish, Portuguese, and additional languages. Um, through Wordly, um, and there'll be a link. Um, it was in the waiting room, and I think we're gonna put it in the chat again, just in case you need it. Thank you, Yvonne. Um, yes, and if you have any questions about that um, throughout the webinar, feel free to message myself, Jacob, Yvonne, um, any of the presenters, or just the full meeting, um, and we'll help you out. Um, I know technology can be tricky, especially the first time you use it. Um, and with that, I think that's everything that I wanted to cover, and I'm going to pass it off to Michelle and Emmanuel. Thank you, Michaela, and thank you, Jacob, for um, such a nice introduction and for inviting us here tonight um, to be part of your series. Uh, it is always um, just the, the utmost um, privilege for us to speak directly to potential next geners and their families um, and always a joy to be with our partners in the work. So thank you for having us tonight. Um, 
I'm okay. sorry, Michelle, can you hold on one second? This is Yvonne. We're having a little bit of technical difficulty with Wordly at the moment. Sure. And we want to make no sure that as folks are coming in that we can translate in their language. Give me one moment, please. I apologize. No problem. We, Michaela, do you want to do a round of jokes? Oh boy, uh, let's see. I, it it sounds like you have a joke in mind. Oh, you don't. You know, I had one earlier. I actually had thought of a really good joke. Um, I don't have it. Michelle, uh, how are you? How's uh, the uh, so? How old is next gen? I know that it seems like it's really operating now, but I, I remember we were doing forums just a few months ago. Um, how's I was, it going? Good, I was counting the months um, and uh, we have been open for five months um, and we have a couple hundred next geners in our program, which was is just completely awesome. Uh, but we've been around um, since December of 2021. So the Commonwealth applied for this grant, received the money, and then um, started designing the program and then took a little over a year to um, design it and implement it. And um, then we hired the staff and then we designed um, our learning experience that you'll hear about. And then we opened our doors. So. Um, it's been going well. Thanks, Jacob. I was trying to think of a joke too, but I'm not good on my feet like that. I, you know, I had a really good one. <laughs> I had like a really, I think it was about the calendar, maybe the, the name of a month. <laughs> I, I don't have it. Have you been, uh, so have you been strategic director that whole time? What's it like to see it come to fruition with, you know, 100, 200 students? Yeah, so I just came on, I've actually, um, it's my one year anniversary today with MRC. So I came on specifically to work with NextGen. Thank you, Michaela. Appreciate the Sally. Um, I came on and before that, I was the director of adolescent and young adult services at the Department of Children and Families. Um, and before that, I also worked with transition age youth and young adults in the healthcare and juvenile justice systems. So um, for me, it was really exciting to shift over and focus on work. In the other roles I was in, I um, had a number of outcomes I was um, focused on. So for me, it was really exciting to intensively work on one, um, which is employment. Uh, and it did not disappoint. It's not not busy though, that's for sure. <laughs> Nothing worth doing is ever easy and slow, that's for sure. I'm sure it, uh, DCF must have been much slower. <laughs> no, uh, I don't know. <laughs> do you, um, Avon, do we, are we sure we can't move forward without Wordly? I um, believe it just started working. Okay, do you want me to? And so I'm gonna put the link back in the chat once more. And if folks who need interpretation Spanish, Portuguese, Chinese, uh, Vietnamese, Haitian Creole, any language that you need. I'm going to put a link in the chat or Michaela, can you do that for me? I think I sent it earlier. Yes, I have it right here. I'll put it right Thank back. you. And if you click on that, you will be able to select the language of your choice. And if you have an issue, please reach out to me. My name is Yvonne. 
and I will try to help you. Thank you. In the largest sense, reach out to us and we will try to help you. Michelle too, as well. Okay, we'll move on then. I just want to invite my colleague, Emmanuel, to um, say hello and introduce himself before we get started with the presentation. Hello, I'm Emmanuel. Um, I'm the peer mentor for the South Region. Um, I have lived experience with a disability and I, um, I also have four to five years of psychiatric experience um, working on st three psychiatric units as a peer mentor. Um, so I bring that to the table. All right, thanks, Emmanuel. Um, we'll talk a little bit more about Emmanuel's work with our next geners in the presentation. I am going to share a PowerPoint, um, hopefully successfully for everybody. <laughs> uh, one moment. Where did I go? Me. I'm just sorry for the visual here, but I'm just going to back up. <laughs> okay. So we are here to tell you all about Next Gen Careers um, and how it looks in the spring of 2023. Next Gen Careers is a special program provided by the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. This program is specifically for young adults with disabilities who are 18 to 30 years old. And we wanna help them explore the world of work and discover a career pathway. Our program is seeking to enroll 1000 young adults from across the Commonwealth, but in very specific areas up until June, 2026. And we have a little less than a quarter of those young adults right now. So we're looking for lots more to join our program. We are testing new ways to help young adults on their job journey. So Massachusetts has had a model of vocational rehabilitation for an, um, a while now, and it has worked for a lot of people. They, a lot of people have been able to discover um, their career path. They've been able to understand that um, the workforce is in need of them. Um, and bust through barriers that might exist because of their disabilities to get a job that is rewarding to them. Um, that has been done in a, in a very specific way. And what we're doing in NextGen is we're trying, we're trying out new, new ways to see if those new ways work better for 18 to 30 year olds in the, um, different job sectors. So for the duration of the grant until June, 2026, NextGen is operating out of the catchment areas of seven area offices in three regions. In the North, we are in Lawrence and Lowell. In the South, we are in downtown Boston, Roxbury and Braintree. And in the West, we are in Springfield and Worcester. What does that mean? <laughs> so this is a list of 117, I think Rebecca counted these for us, <laughs> cities and towns where Next Gen Careers is currently serving people. This means that you have to have an address or you have to live in one of these cities and towns in order to qualify for Next Gen Careers. If you happen to live in a city or town out it, that's not on this list, um, the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission General Vocational Rehabilitation Program is still available to you. This special one won't be until sometime after June, 2026. The reason for that is we're demonstrating new ways of doing things and we want to make sure they work before we make a lot of changes in the state's um, way that they deliver services um, and go statewide. So we're starting here and we're hoping to expand. 
And I'll just give folks a moment with this slide because there's a lot of information on it. <laughs> So what are these new things I keep talking about? Well, in NextGen Careers, we have a multidisciplinary team. Next Geners are, that's our 18 to 30 year old young adults who are doing Next Gen. We call them Next Geners. Next Geners are at the center of a team of people. These people offer a variety of skills and expertise to support an employment goal. And if next geners want, their families can receive support from the team. We understand that people's families are very important when they're making life decisions, both small and large, and that families have a lot of questions and have a lot of um, input that they can have into planning for success for next gener. And we try and make sure that they have the space to do that. And we'll talk a little bit more about how we do that when we get into more details about the team. We have a career preparedness component, which is assessing and enhancing factors associated with career self-actualization. We call this self-cares, and we help participants improve their preparation for their careers. What is self career self-actualization? It's really being happy and, and fulfilled in your job choice. So, you know, if you choose a job and you don't like it, you're not very likely to stay there. But if you choose a job and you like it, you're likely to stay. If you're likely to stay, you could be promoted. If you're promoted, you could make more money. Um, you could get more opportunity. So we really want our next geners to understand what career self-actualization looks like for them because it looks different from for everybody right for me when i was making choices about my career i really needed to be around people i needed to work with people um other other um, friends that i had that were the same age entering the workforce didn't want anything to do with people they had plenty of people outside of their job and they weren't looking for more within it so you really have to kind of figure out what's going to work for you and what's going to help you feel good about the job that you're doing. And we'll talk a little bit more about the self-cares uh, learning experience. In Next Gen, we're creating career pathways, short work-based learning, particularly in the field of STEM, which is science, technology, engineering, and math. We know that um, pathways into STEM fields frequently include internships and apprenticeships. So we're working on developing those for our next geners as well. We also offer career extended support. So once a next gener gets a job, gets into a career pathway, we don't all just disappear and say congratulations. We help them with on the job problem solving to help maintain their employment, counseling to better prepare for promotional opportunities and other supports to promote independence. Work life is not without conflict and not without stress. And that's the case for anybody that has a job. And we want to help um, next geners understand that and be able to um, take on the stressors of their work using different skills so that um, they can uh, you know, remain in their chosen career and be happy doing so. Why STEM? Um, why is, why in Next Gen are we focused on STEM careers? Most STEM jobs right now are in high demand, but suffer from a lack of qualified candidates. So there's more jobs out there than people who are um, qualified to do them, which makes it really an exciting place to go seek a job. Persons with lived experience with a disability often acquire academic, technical, and self-determination skills, and they find ways to overcome barriers. And this is critical and valued. These are critical and valued skills in STEM fields. The Commonwealth Corporation back in 2019 studied our state, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, 
and found over 20% of manufacturing jobs in Massachusetts have become STEM jobs, business services, financial services, retail employers. All of these places um, are, are developing STEM occupations. Uh, so it's not just your, you know, big tech firms, which are, uh, or um, engineering companies that um, are employing folks out of STEM. And STEM jobs are expected to account for 25% of the total employment growth over the next 10 years. So we don't see this as just kind of a blip on the radar. This is something that's going to have sustained growth over the next decade. So we're going to talk a little bit about self cares because this is really new in vocational rehabilitation. So we're as young adults are in next geners or pursuing their career paths. We're giving them a learning experience to really learn about themselves and choose an area that they may want to develop further. And we call these self cares, and it's an acronym, and it stands for self capacity which is confidence in their ability to perform a job, self-advocacy, the ability to direct one's own life. And we know that um, people need to advocate for themselves at work, and they also need to advocate for themselves at home <laughs> in order to make both sides of their life um, something that they can be successful at. And we help them with those advocacy skills. Self-realization, so understanding their strengths and limitations, which can help them make the right choice about a career path and a job, and self-sufficiency, the ability to be independent. And we don't think the um, ability to be independent is being alone at all. It's not. Being independent is effectively using the resources that exist in your life that are available to you in order to be successful. Um, I just want to invite Emmanuel because I know he has um, worked on some of the self-care assessments with some of our current next geners to help you understand what that looks like a little bit. Yeah, so um, the self-care assessment is- Hi, very quick. I'm so sorry to interrupt you. Um, we've been asked to slow down a little bit so that interpretation can keep up with all the great information that we're giving. So just make sure we're keeping that in mind and we'll be all set. Okay. Thanks, Michaela. So, so I've done self-care assessments with a few of my clients. Um, they're, uh, they range, I don't know how, um, how many exact questions there are on it, but they're all uh, fairly straightforward questions and they're rated on a scale of one to five, five being totally agree, um, one being strongly disagree. Um, and it measures um, each pillar. Um, each pillar gets a grade of how, what your current standing is in that level. Um, and then we help um initiate activities based on these pillars and where um each next gen needs work in them yeah and we it, this also is next gen or driven so they choose the area that they work in the it, assessment sort of gives them an idea of given the way that they're answering questions how um, how much development they have, the opportunity for development in each area, or as Emmanuel calls them, pillars, because we have a visual of these pillars, um, which is um, you know capacity, advocacy, realization, and sufficiency. Um, but if a next gener, you know, might score not as high in advocacy as they do in capacity, they choose which area that they wanna spend their time developing. So it's completely their choice. Yep. Thanks, Emmanuel. No problem. So we thought it would be helpful to share the roles on the next gen team. Uh, 
And we'll start with, I think, Emmanuel, I'll read a few of them, but then I want, I think it would be great for you to talk more about your peer mentor role. So each team in each region has a supervisor, has a peer mentor. We have family partners available in each region for our next generous families. We have career counselors. We have employment success specialists to help identify and create those opportunities for apprenticeships or internships or job trainings. We have a benefits counselor. A lot of our next geners receive social security and um, it can be a little bit uh, time consuming to figure out how much money you earn may impact your social security benefits. And we have a benefits counselor to help our next geners and their families understand that. We also have specialty counselor roles that include one specialty counselor for blind, low vision, next geners, and another one for those who are deaf or hard of hearing. Um, and I, I just thought it would be helpful if Emmanuel described his role and also how his team operates a little bit with all these folks on it. Emmanuel? Yeah, so uh, like I said, I'm the peer mentor. Um, I come with lived experience. I, I view myself as um, the success story of mass rehab and what they're trying to do. Um, I have lived experience with a disability and I have utilized um, mass rehab's VR service and obtained myself um, a degree, a bachelor's degree. And I have also um, maintained several jobs and gained a meaningful career with mass rehab as a peer mentor. Um, so I think I'm 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 the picture boy of the um, of the system that we're trying to implement. Um, I work closely with um, the employment success specialist. And when a next genner feels like they're ready um, to sign up and start trying to apply for jobs, um, I'll bring the employment success specialist in. Um, if the next genner has benefits that they question if they'll lose them or if how much they'll um, go down if they start working, I'll bring in the um, benefits counselor, Leslie. Um, and I always double check everything that I'm doing and uh, offering the next geners with my supervisor to make sure that I'm on track. Um, yeah, I'm back to Michelle. Thank you. Yeah. So as I said in the beginning of the presentation, young adults have a choice on which type of um, model they receive from the Massachusetts Rehabilitation Commission. Um, they can choose either the general vocational rehabilitation model, or if they're in our service areas, they can choose next gen careers. And um, a question, as you can imagine, we get a lot is what's the difference? So um, they're both great. <laughs> um, the mass, the general vocational rehabilitation, which we call VR, has uh, a history of proven success. And Next Gen Careers is innovating new ideas to do the work. In general vocational rehabilitation, the VR counselor primarily works one on one with a young adult and brings in other resources as partners. In Next Gen Careers, um, this team of people that we just described is internal and available to the next genner from the day they walk in the door. So we're in VR, if it, it's determined that you might need a mentor or you might need benefits counseling, that can go be obtained for you. In next gen careers, it's assumed that you're already gonna need it. 
and these folks are already on your team. In general vocational, in general VR, sorry, internships and apprenticeships are not highly utilized. And I've already mentioned in next-gen careers, they really are. In general VR, support is provided for participants currently pursuing associates or bachelor's degrees. Whereas in next-gen careers, support is provided for participants who want to work right away and are seeking shorter term training opportunities and programs. So frequently we have folks that come to next gen and they are in the service area, um, but they wanna enroll in college, say in September and go full-time and that's great. But we would direct them to the general VR model because that's gonna meet their needs more. Peer and family support in general VR, if provided, is externally sourced. In next-gen careers, teams automatically include peer mentors and family partners. And specialty counselors, such as our blind, low vision um, specialty counselor, they operate independently. So they exist, but outside of general VR, whereas again, Next gen careers, they're on the team. So those are Michelle, the main. Yes. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you. Can you just pause for a second? I'm sure. just uh, following along here the wordly, and um, I already communicate with Yvonne there, just to make sure that we keep. Yep. No problem. Okay. Thank you. It was working well, by the way. That's oh, good. good. Want me to continue? Okay, let's try. Let's see. I join again and let's see if it will work. I think you can keep going. Okay. And let's see what, what will happen. Almost at the end. Hang in there, everybody. So here we have a list of our regional supervisors. And if anybody has any questions, next geners, potential next geners, families, potential families, supporters, these regional supervisors are the place to go. They can help talk to you about whether this is the right choice, what other options might be out there, what to expect. And they can also help next geners enroll. In the north, we have Cheryl Theracloth. In the south, we have Davil Raval. And in the west, Krista DiGregorio. And here is their um, emails and phone numbers. And uh, I'm sure Jacob or Michaela will be able to share this deck with you. So how do you enroll? Let's say Emmanuel and I sold you tonight on making this choice to jump into next gen careers. We have a link to a website um, and we have made it incredibly easy to enroll in next-gen careers. You may have found maybe through school systems or other systems of care that there is tons of paperwork when you enroll. Even if you just go to your doctor's office these days, you have to fill out pages and pages of paperwork just to get your sniffles taken care of. Uh, that's not the case in next-gen careers. We have a very easy inquiry form. Who are you? Where do you live? Um, how do we get in touch with you? And then we'll take it from there. Our next gen team will be in touch or a member of our next gen team will be in touch. 
we'll talk to you about the program. We'll help um, you with eligibility, which is not complicated at all. We do only serve young adults with disabilities, but we don't ask for tons of um, documentation or paperwork around disabilities. And then we set up a meeting with you and your family if you want and talk to you about your career goals. And we introduce you to your team and we let you pick who you wanna work with on your team up front. All of our teams have a team lead and that's the person that you just speak with the most. The rest of the team might be at your meetings, might be on the phone with you here and there. If they're not, they're working in the background on your behalf. And that's it. Now we can take your questions about next gen careers. I don't see just um, I don't see any questions in the chat or in the Q and A. I and see Sasha unmuted. Oh yeah, I have a question. Um, so I got an email, so I'm already enrolled. I had uh, met with Cheryl and I got an email from Justin Chapman and he said that we're going to meet via Zoom. Um, is that the same thing as the uh, meeting to pick your team? Um, I'm not sure, Sasha. I'm not, I'm not sure. Have you met with, so you met with Cheryl and now Justin's your sort of first yeah, he's gonna, he's gonna talk about what um the next gen program can do for me. Yeah. Um, I did want to meet in person to maybe like pick my team and maybe like bring my mom. Um, yeah. so I was just wondering um what the uh first meeting would be. Yeah, I'll Justin can help you do that. Um, okay. he'll sort of talk to you about what the work looks like a little bit, and um, we actually just have we're about to release bio videos, so um. He'll, he can email those to you so you can meet the whole team. They've all made videos about themselves mm -hmm. and then he can help guide you to choose a team lead. Yep, for sure. All right, thank you so um, much. You're welcome. Welcome, first of all, to Next Gen. We're excited to have you. Thank you. Um, and one other thing I wanted to say, oh yes, we don't always meet on Zoom. We meet in person as well. So if that's your preference, definitely let Justin know and he'll make that happen. All right, thank you so much. Sure. We we have a question in the chat. At what age can a student enroll? Um, so you have to be 18. Um, that's the in you can't be 31. So you have to be between the ages of 18 and 30. And if you're 17, um, but you're gonna be 18 soon, you should reach out to us because we can sort of put you on our radar and stay in touch with you and formally enroll you um when you're 18. Uh, we have another question in the chat. Uh, so what do timelines look like? Let's say someone uh, emails after this meeting. Uh, how long does it take to call next gen, hear back? Uh, what does that look like in terms of enrollment process? Most of the time um, we're back. If you fill out an inquiry form, we're in touch with you within two to three business days. Um, no later than three. Usually it's um, if you if you're um, inquiring in the morning and it's a Monday, you know we're in touch within 24 hours. And if you haven't heard from us in three business days, something went wrong. Feel free to reach back out. Okay. Um, just last call. Does anyone have any questions, comments, philosophical inquiries? So um, with that, then, I think we are good to go. Uh, if you would like to reach out for further information, feel free to visit fcsn.org. Uh, we do have a question in Portugal. We have two questions that have come in, so stop the presses. Um, Patricia, would you... 
Okay, I'm sorry, I misread that. That is actually Portuguese for if you have a question. Yeah, if you have any question in Portuguese, you can type here or you can ask and we can help you out and Thank answer you. by email if that's the case. Thank you, Patricia. Um, oh. Karen, I do see your question. Sorry, Jacob, I didn't mean to jump in on you there. Um, absolutely, you should reach out to us um, if, if, if your family member or yourself is not interested in a traditional college degree, um, you should absolutely reach out to us and, and we can help explore your options in that area. But that is what NextGen is focused on. And general vocational rehabilitation, even though they can help folks who want a degree, they often are helping folks who aren't interested in that pathway. Michelle? Yes. There is one question in Portuguese. Okay. And it says, my son is turning 18 in March, 2024, and it's the last year of high school. Mm -hmm. um, can he join the program? When is the best day to enroll? Um, ideally, I would say call us in February and we can set up a meeting for shortly after he turns 18 and okay. talk about um, if he's still fully engaged at school and, you know, has, is in a full day program, it might be something we can start right after graduation. I know that a lot of um, high school seniors, I have one myself, the work is winding down at that point and the programming is winding down at that point. Um, we may be able to start as soon as he turns 18. Perfect, thank you. Thank you. So if you have, if anyone or anyone who knows anyone at any point has any questions, I'm available at J-R-I-V-A-S at FCSN.org, uh, which is in the chat. Again, we are the Federation for Children with Special Needs. We have information on all sorts of services, be they next gen, um, be they things you might be dealing with with the school, be they transition in general. So feel free to check fcsn.org and reach out to me or Michaela, whose email address is too difficult uh, or with too many letters to spell letter by letter out loud. It's um, in the chat. In the chat. Uh, or yeah, come stop by fcsn.org, fcsn.org slash events. Uh, and once again, thank you to Michelle Banks. Michelle is the uh, strategic director, uh, the head honcho of the next program. <laughs> so we appreciate her time. Uh, and I'm sure you'll appreciate her time if we ever speak with her in the uh, process of next gen. We're really excited about the program, uh, sort of as a state. And then Emmanuel, it's always a pleasure to see you, brother. Um, I hope to see you again soon. And thanks for being with us. Um, I'm going to stop recording. If anyone uh, has any any last words, um, Jacob, I did see one um, one question in the chat. I think we missed another one from Karen. Catch. Uh, sure. Uh, why not, though? We're here. So, um, Karen, if somebody has tried VR before and it didn't work out for them, they're certainly welcome to apply to NextGen, reapply to VR. We have many, not many, but we, we do have a few folks that were in that situation and have returned for service and are enrolled in NextGen. So certainly that would potentially be an option. Your ask is what would NextGen do differently for them? It's really a tough question to answer, not knowing all the specifics on their experience and how it went, but it's always worth a conversation. So we're happy to, to revisit it um, if that person wants to reach out to us. Okay, now I think we're done. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.